Hi, thank you so much for tuning in to watch ICC's online services. My name is Ravi and I'm the founder of the International Christian Community. Please do stay tuned because right after this message, there's something very important I'd like to share with you. So in the meantime, be blessed and enjoy. Oh, okay, introduction. I have a definition. There are different definitions. I have three definitions. The definition from the dictionary, the definition from the Bible, and my own uh, definition. And then <laughs> there are kinds of obedience. How, how many knew that there are many kinds of obedience? Because people think you obey or you don't obey. But there are also timing, right? Do you do it right away? Or do you say no and after you do it? Right? You remember the parable of the two sons? The one said, I'm going to do it. He didn't do it. The other one, I'm not going to do it. And did it. So which side do we want to be? And I have some examples of people in the Bible who obeyed and those who disobeyed. And I have um, their fruit of obedience and disobedience. Everything bears fruit. God works in seeds. Everything is about seed. Um, so just we know there is fruit whatever we do. And then, and try to find out why do we disobey? Um, sometimes we, do it, we don't do it on purpose. Sometimes we do it on purpose. But why do we do it? And then I'm going to conclude with some, um, some stories. Uh, let me try with, I call it the word definition because it's uh, the definition from the dictionary. There were so many interesting things about the, this definition. They say obedience is an act of, or quality of being obedient. But what does it mean to be obedient? Uh, willingness to do, I highlight to do what someone tells you to do or to follow a law, rule, or command. Everybody knows about that, right? This is a definition everybody knows. Uh, when we talk about obedience, we have a submit, uh, heed, comply, surrender, conform, observe, trust, all the things when you hear about that, it's about obedience. Uh, you can't just say, I didn't hear the word obedience. It's all the things, so they, they're in the same category. You are complying with something, you are surrendering to the, the instruction from home. So all the things, when you meet them and you're not doing them, then you're disobeying. Because the Bible also talks about submitting, surrounding, but it's still the obedience uh, family, if I can call it. Uh, but if you are disobeying, you are defying, you are rebelling, you are ignoring, you are discard, dis disregarding, dismiss, transgress, and violate. All those things, when you are doing them, are on the other side. So it's not only disobedience, it's also rebelling, ignoring. And we have done all those things. We are disregarding the law, the law of not um, driving on the, on the, only on the road or maybe um, speeding uh, a limit we are driving over it or whatever. But now we have the, the definition from the Bible. If it comes, why is it coming? I can just, yeah. Um, to hear God's word and act accordingly. But you need to hear that or to read it. And, dear friend, if you don't read that book, you won't know what God wants you to do. This is just the beginning. If you're not reading this book, it's going to be difficult to act accordingly. This is the, the start point, right? Old Testament said obeying its hearing, right? Hearing, at that time they were hearing the, the word, they were not reading, but for us it's reading or hearing, right? The New Testament say obeying its hearing, listening in a state of submission or to trust. So you are hearing something and you're gonna do it. Right? So it's not only hearing, but it's also doing it. In the Old Testament time, 
If you hear something, you do it. There was no question, right? But now, some people, they will just hear it and not doing it. So hearing is not enough. That's why they say you have to submit to what you are hearing. And then I have my own definition. After I have read different <coughs> uh, scriptures, those are the things I came up with. Do, I highlight and in red, everything is about doing. It's not mostly about reading, it's the doing. First, what God asks you to do in his way, in his timing. Second, do what men can't ask you to do based on God's standard and to go well with you. Why am I saying do first? Because if, let me give you an example. Let's say that a woman, she's married to a non-Christian, a non-believer. And her, her husband tells her she should not believe in Jesus. She should not read the Bible. What are you going to do? The Bible says you should submit to your husband. What are you going to do? You may not read the Bible in front of him, but you're going to do it. Do first what God is asking you. Or you're working somewhere and your employer to ask you to cheat. We are supposed to submit to our authority. Are you going to do that? Do first what God asks you to do, and then do what other people are asking, asking you to do based on God's standard, and it will go well with you. If you don't, it won't go well with you. Those are the scriptures I use to come up with my definition. Blessed are those who hear Luke chapter 11, 28, verse 28, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it or do it, right? That's where my do comes from. Acts 5, chapter 5, verse 29. We must obey God rather than men. Here in the background of this, uh, this uh, verse, it was when Apostle Paul, they were healing people, and the Sadducees and the high priest, they got jealous, they threw them in jail. The angel of God came and just freed them, and they went and they were teaching the temple because that's what the Holy Spirit asked them to do, the angel asked them to do. And then they, they came and told them, we told you not to do that. And they say, that's what they answer. We must obey God rather than men. That's why I got the thing first. And for the, his way and his timing is from Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 1 to 27. I won't go through the whole thing. You're going to read it. It's about the walls of Jericho. How many remember the story? It's a weird story. Go around the wall, seven, was it seven times, six times? Seven times. And the last day, so, six times, right? And, and shout. <laughs> Come on, if they ask you to do that, are you going to do that? Why, why, you know? If even they ask you that, even when I heard this story, I was like, ah, this is weird, you know? If I do that, people don't think I'm stupid, right? Go, and especially those people inside the walls, they, they were like, what are they doing? Are they crazy? Maybe doing this, they were confusing them, but God knows why. How many times God asked you to do things, it didn't make any sense? Am I the only one? It happened to you. And, you do it, you're like, wow, I'm happy I did it. And somebody you don't, I say, I knew I should have done that, right? Because God knows. He knows the enemy. He knows how to disturb the enemy. He knows how to confuse the enemy. We don't, but he knows. That's why he asks us to do sometimes things that are weird. If you don't get it, your enemy won't even get it, which is easy, right? And I have some verses in the Bible. Uh, actually, it, this is a fact what I, I, I found. I found there were 46 verses in the Bible about obeying or submission. And then I divide them. Obeying God, I saw 25 times, right? It says a lot, more than half is obeying God directly. Because uh, you can obey God, but when he asks you to, to obey the authority, to obey your parents, but this 25, it's directed to the law of God. And then children obeying their parents seven times. Wives obey husband six times. Earthly leaders or authorities over us four times. 
slave obeying their masters three times. People may say, they, we don't have that. Oh yeah, we still have that. We still have slaves some places. But God is asking, us, is asking them to obey their masters. You can read those, the Bible in, in Galatians, the book of Galatians, they are talking about all those obeying uh, your parents, your, your husband, or authorities and slaves. You can see those things, uh, those um, verse about that. And then they say in Ephesians chapter 5, um, verse 21, obey one another. Um, because when they say obey one another, if they ask the woman to obey the husband, but the husband doesn't have to obey his wife, then we have Ephesians say, you still obey each other, <laughs> right? Or the authorities, they have to obey you. Because if, no, at least respect you, they have to respect you. Because as a leader, you don't know everything, right? And if someone comes with an opinion, you need to respect that because it's the only way you can grow, right? And then comes the kind of obedience. There's something I call complete obedience, no matter the cost. Whenever you ask it, I'm gonna just do it. The tough one, right? No question, God comes and tell you, just go around and screaming, 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 like 10 times a year in front of everybody. Okay, I will do it and start to run. Those kind of weird thing. And then we have what I call conditional obedience. I will do it only if, right? This is the one we almost all of us lack. I will do it, but you have to show me that. I will do it, but you need to give me that. I can do it. I'm not smart enough. I'm not qualified. I'm too young. I'm not, I, I can't do it, but you have to show me, show me a, a sign. This is really weird, God. I can't do that. Show me a sign, right? I'm going to give you an example in the Bible of people we admire. They did the same thing. I think it's a, if you look at the fruit of, of, out of their obedience, it was okay with them. I will go through that afterward. And we have a temporary obedience, which I call until get tough. You know? It's kind of disobedience. I will do it until it gets tough, until it doesn't make any sense, until it makes me look weird until I lose my job, until I lose my, my friend, until I use this thing, and then I will stop, and that's it, right? I have done, I have been through all three. I think most of us have, right? And then let's um, talk about the complete obedience. Noah, in Genesis 6, chapter 6, verse 22, I mean, God asked Noah to build a ark. It was not raining at that time, but what I heard, there was, they never experienced rain. And when we read it, we think it happened like a few months, but it took years, right? It didn't just happen like that, it took years. And you can imagine people were just making fun of him, just making fun of him all the time. But he was just focused why he knew his God. His God is not stupid. God knows why he asked him to do that. And he knew that his role was so important in God's plan. God told him, I'm gonna destroy all mankind. It's only you that I won't destroy everybody. Somehow we had a relationship with God. That's the complete obedience. If you don't know your God, you won't obey them. The same with kids. If you know your parents love you, they will always be there. They ask you to do things, we just do it whether it makes sense or not. It's the same thing. But if you don't know your, your let's, let's say you have a, a parent, they were not there when you were young, and they come all of a sudden, they say, you shouldn't do this. You look at him, you're like, who are you? You don't even know me, right? And that's the same thing we, 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 say we do with God. God, we ask you to do something. Are you crazy? Actually, what are you talking about? You don't know the person. You can't trust them. This is the a complete obedience is based on, uh, on trust, mostly on trust. Again, the Bible, you need to know what God has done, can do, and will do. Abraham, Genesis 22, sacrifice of Isaac. I mean, <laughs> he waited to have, how, people who have tried to have kids, they were not able to have kids, they understand that better. He waited and waited so many years. His wife was almost 100 years. 
He was, and they say he was, he was used up, right? Is it the word they're using? There was no hope. And finally, you know, you have been praying for something so many years. And finally, bam, it happened. And God said, I'm going to take it from you. You're like, no way. You're not taking from me, you know, over my, be- my, my dead body. You're not taking from me. And God asked him to do this. Okay, fine, God. You told me you're going to beat the nation out of me. If you take him, then you give me another one. That's the relationship with God. He trusts God and he knows he's not a liar. He knows he's like, you know what? You can do whatever you want. You are the master of the plan. If you ask me to do that, I will going to do it. If I never have a kid, that was your plan to beat the nation out of me. So just do it. No question asked. The widow of Elijah, first king, chapter 17. You remember when the Elijah asked the, the widow to prepare uh, a bread for, her, for, for him? And she had only a little bit left from, yeah, a little bit left from, from, from him, uh, for, for him and his, his, his son. And he just said, you know what, just make for me and you always have enough to eat. And she just said, she believed. And she didn't know Elijah, right? Just come as a prophet, he said that, and she just believed. Somehow she had a relationship with God. Mary, mother of Jesus. <laughs> Actually, when I read, at that time when she was engaged, they were around 12 and 14 years. 12 and 14 years, they are almost in children's church, right? She was young, and they tell her, you, you're pregnant, she's like, whoa, they're going to kill me, because at that time you're pregnant, you're not married, they're going to kill you. But she said, let it be as you say, right? Again, relationship with God. Joseph, oh, actually, by the way, your wife is pregnant, but you are not the dad, but it's, she didn't cheat on you, right? It's the Holy Spirit that came. Even now, you're like, man, how many would just believe that? I'm asking you. I say, I do think I'm stupid, right? Jesus, perfect obedience. I don't have to say much. We are here, we have hope, salvation, just because of his obedience. Those disciples in many gospels, when they were teaching the word of God, most of them, they die as martyr, except John, but not because they didn't try, because it wasn't God's plan. Can we do that? Can we teach the word of God no matter what? Me, the time I use the complete obedience, I had an interview long time ago. And I'm telling you, I told them everything. Actually, I even focused on my weakness. And I was talking and talking. It was, I said everything. Because I, before I went, I pray. I said, God, help me to be honest. If that's my job, it's my job. I said everything. They were looking for 10 people. They had 100 applicants. They asked me, after we had an interview, asked me to go out. I left the room for five, ten, ten minutes. I came in. They say, actually, you got a job. I say, are you sure? I, I almost say, I'm not qualified. Mm. I say, are you sure? They say, yeah. And afterward, there were ten people. They took only nine. I was the last one, and they closed the whole thing. And when I talked to other people who got the job, they told me they had to wait weeks. Me, it was right away. And when I came, I was like, was I stupid? How come I told them everything? But I'm still, have, I'm, I'm still in that job. And then, conditional, I'm going to go quickly. I don't have much time. Moses, conditional. You remember when God asked him to go uh, to free his people. Oh, I can't talk. Oh, who, they're, going, they're not going to listen to me. We, we admire Moses. But how many excuses did he make? But still, God was providing. Because he understands our weakness. Abraham. Hagar Ishbein, I don't have to say much, right? He couldn't wait, you know. I know his wife encouraged him, but he's the head of the, the, the family. Then he was supposed to take the, the decision. Gideon, oh God, do this. And if you look, you, 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 you read Judges chapter 6, 17, he asked for sign. So many times God almost angry. The same thing with, with Moses. God, God almost got angry, but he did it. He understood our weaknesses. Barak. 
You remember how many know the story of the Barak? The Israelites were being attacked by Midianite. And God, they cry and cry and cry. God said, now I'm going to, to help you. And Deborah was a, a prophetess, and she was a judge, actually. Actually, she was a president. At that time, judges, they were like leaders, right? And she told Barak, you have to go. I have given you, uh, what's his name? The guy, Caesarah, the Midianite. Uh, uh, he said, I have given Caesar in your hand. You have to go. And the bar, mm -mm, I'm not going anywhere until you come with me. I'm not going with him. I say, okay, fine. If you're not going with me, if you're not, you want, want to go with me, I will go with you. But I'm going to give the country to a woman. That woman wasn't Deborah. It was the woman that killed Sisera. Not Deborah. Many people, they think it's Deborah. It's not Deborah. It's that lady who killed the guy. You remember how she killed her, him really violent, the way she did it, you know? That's the way, actually, because if you kill the leader, actually, you... You are the one who get the, the victory. That's why when in that time, when they, were cap they captured the, the leader of when they are, have, they are going to war, they captured a leader, they, all, they didn't kill the leader. They will wait for their leader to come and kill him. So the victory, just because he didn't obey, the victory went to that lady, not to Barak. Esther, oh, you have to pray and fast with me. Otherwise, I'm not going there. They're going to kill me. But she, she's not as a hero, right? Because she did it anyway. Me, I don't remember. I'm this kind of do it or not do it. So <laughs> maybe we come. Temporary obedience. Adam and Eve, we are here because of them, right? God told me, don't touch, don't touch that food, don't touch that food. They touch it. The consequences, pff, even now, we are paying for that. Egyptian pharaoh, we just say, okay, let, 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 you, you can go but he changed his mind. What happened? They died, right? The consequences of disobedience. Children of Israel, of Israel in wilderness and promised land. Oh, if you read the, the book of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, you see how, and even for Exodus, you see how they've been obeying, it is obeying up and down, up and down, and up and down. You do this, we're gonna do it, and then they will disobey, they will disobey. What they did, we are still doing it, by the way. The first son in the parable of the two, two, two sons. I don't know if you know the, the, the parable. Judah in the book, Judah as a nation, not a person, in the book of Jeremiah. Up and down, God just forgive them and he's just asking them, please, I don't want to, don't want to judge you. Please, can you just turn back and do what I ask you to do? Me, my disobedience, led me to being a single mother for so many years. I won't go in details, but that's what the price I had to make. But God it was gracious. He changed my condition, and I'm grateful for that. I'm not saying that every single mother is because of their disobedience. That was my case. Question to you. What did you when did you disobey, and it cost you a lot? Ask yourself that question, and do something about it. And what, when did you obey in a miraculous way and God did amazing thing? Ask you a question, that question. I know I don't have much time, but I will go through it quickly. Obedience in modern life. Because what I was talking about was just the, the Bible. Now obedience is a sign of weakness. Wow, you obey, you are a wimp. You obey, you are not strong enough. You, do, you obey, you don't have a tough skin, right? It's not competition, you know? Because competition to do what is against the law, no? Gangs to show that you have power, right? That's, it's it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a virtue almost, like a, than a sin. Because obedience has lost its meaning and power. We don't know what it really means to obey. We really don't know. Obedience is misuse and abuse. What am I saying? We have seen parents mistreated their kids because the kid has to obey. We have seen men misuse their wife because they have to submit. We have seen leaders misusing and even killing them in the name of obedience. We still see that. Have, you, have, you been, have we um, used our power as parents? 
to get our way with kids just because we want them to do things the way we want them to do, if even we know it's wrong. Husband, have we used our power to misuse our, our, our wife? As long as God say you should obey someone, this is a responsibility. God loved us before he asked us to obey. God loved and supplied everything to even Adam before he asked him to obey. Husband, love your wife before you ask her to obey you. Leaders, respect the people under you before you ask them, you, you, before you feel like you deserve obedience. Because we have to follow the example of God. God supply. It's easy to obey someone who loves you, who respects you. But having said that, if even they don't love you, they don't respect you, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, to obey them. That's how it is. Nobody becomes an authority without God letting them have that, um, that position. Fruit of obedience, some examples. Noah, we are here. What do I, what do I mean? If he say no, the world will be destroyed, right? See the consequences because Noah was obedient. Abraham, because God asked him to sacrifice his son, he didn't do it. The blessing, you can have blessing, blessing for you and your family, right? And he promised he's gonna bless him and his family just because he was so obedient. When you are obeying God, it's not only for you, if you're, it's also for your offspring. Remember that, right? Maybe this can push you to say no to some other thing. Mary, I mean, be called the mother of God, the son. There's no better title as a wife. Even now, we still remember her. We respect her. She did take a very important decision, and we are still you know, enjoying the fruit of what she has done. Again, it's not for you when you obey, also for your family. Jesus, we have a second chance. We are not lost, we are saved. We were once lost, but we are saved. Esther, judgment is re reversed. It was going to be the first Holocaust, but it didn't happen just because Esther took the decision. She knew they would, they would kill her, but she said, whatever, right? She need convic con convincing, but she did it, right? If even you don't do it right away, if even you have condition, God will always come through. Disciples, because they went and taught the word of God, we, know, we have it, we have the word of God. And we still have to do that. They risk their life. They die because of the word. Why did they do that? Because they have a relationship with God. Obedience has to do with the relationship you have with the, per the person you are obeying to. Moses, despite all his excuses, freedom for a nation, they came to the promised land because he did it anyway. He could just have said, no way, I'm not doing it. And especially when you know what he did there, before he, he ran away. And then fruit of disobedience, suffering, Judah, the nation, and Israel. If you look at the book of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they suffered. At least one of the things, exile for 70 years. It's a long time. People who went there, when they were like 10, maybe they died, they didn't come back. Pharaoh, they died. That most of the time, it's, it's suffering when you disobey. It may not happen now, but it will. Regret, I didn't have it there. Regret, a lot of, you regret, why did I do that? There's nothing good. It's just death when you disobey. It may not be literally death, but it's, it, it's death inside. Some people, they have lost so much just because they didn't say yes when they were supposed to say yes, they didn't say no when they were supposed to say no. Why do we disobey? Why not just disobey but because we want? Some people, they've been taken advantage of many times. They say, you know what, I have to protect myself. Nobody's gonna protect me. The person who was supposed to protect me is not there, then I won't disobey. I'm gonna disobey. Lack of trust. I can't trust you. I don't think you want the best for me. If I trust you, I'm gonna have trouble. Most of the people who, who have the lack of trust, it's because there is a reason. 
no consequences. People disobey, no consequences. Corrupt um, police officers, why should I obey? Because no consequences. The leaders of countries, they are stealing from their country, no consequences. They're supposed to protect their, their, their people, no consequences. Kids are lying and doing whatever they want, no consequences. If you do this, I will do that. When they do it, don't do anything, no consequences. Arrogance, some people are just, if you want to define them, it's just they are just arrogant. That's just to show that they are strong, they are disobeying, you know, the gangs. They cannot assess the outcome or they cannot evaluate the outcome. They, they, they don't know the consequences, really. They know, but really they don't know. If I'm speeding, right? Really, in my head, do I remember that I'm going to pay like 2,000? Do I really, really have this in my background? I really don't know. It's difficult because we are trying to water down the consequences because we are trying to do everybody. Everybody is just speeding, you know, why not speed? Everybody is leaving their cups there when they finish to eat, to drink, so why not doing it? It's always everybody is doing that. Some people, they have no choice. They feel they don't, they have no choice. Everybody has a choice, but they feel they have no choice. But before that, I just showed the consequences, uh, the, the reason why we can lie. Are we allowed to lie? Those are legitimate, le le legitimate uh, reason. But are we allowed? Does the Bible say, yeah, you can disobey if this and that? It doesn't. Oh, God have mercy. The conclusion, I have read some, some stories. I thought they were interesting. <laughs> Who said it's got on? Um, um, during the US Civil War, Abraham Lincoln met with a group of ministers for a prayer breakfast. Lincoln was not a church goer, but was a man of deep. If at time, if at time an orthodox faith, at one point, one of the ministers said, Mr. President, let us pray that God is on our side. Lincoln's respond, response will show, that, show far greater inside. He answered, no, gentlemen, let us pray that we are on God's side. Not God coming on our side, we are on God's side. And when I say, oh, which side am I? Do I wait? Do I, uh, Am I waiting for God to come on my side or I have to go to his side? Another one. A businessman well known for his ruthlessness once announced the writer Mark Twain. Before I die, I mean to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. I will climb Mount Sinai. We did right? It is high. I tried it and read the Ten Commandments aloud at the top. <laughs> you know what Twain replied? You could stay in Boston and keep them. Right? If God does this for me, I will do this for him. Just do what you're supposed to do right now. We are just procrastinating, yeah? Another one. The work of the Christian. <laughs> I think this was funny. A father and son arrive in a small western town looking for an uncle whom they have never seen. Suddenly, the father pointing across the square, the square to a man who was walking away from them ex exclaimed, there goes my uncle. His son said, how do you know when you have not seen him before? Son, I know him because he walks exactly like my father. Do people identify us through Jesus, because we walk like Jesus, oh God. He knew, he knew that they're the same family, they have something in common. Training Arabian horses. 
oh, this I thought it was cool, but it's interesting. Arabian horses are trained rigorously in the Middle Eastern desert, uh, desert. The horses must learn to fully obey their master. This obedience is tested by depriving the horses of water for many days and then turning them loose near the water. See how cruel it is? As the horses get to the edge of the water and just before they drink of the, the much needed water, the trainer blows his whistle. If the horses have learned to obey, they run around and come back to the trainer, who then gives them as much water as they need. See, he knows what they need and he knows what they can go through. He knows even they are thirsty, they can still do it. If God, you know, puts you in some condition, and then sometimes we are so close to get the what we want, and if like the trainer just blows and you just, I'm gonna drink, maybe it's not enough. Sometimes we are so close and then I can't anymore. God knows us and gonna give us everything we want. If he's asking us to obey, it's not because he, he hates us, it's because he wants what is best for us. The last one, um, when Adoram, how many know Adoram Johnson? I think, how many, it was the first time I saw him, he was a missionary. When he graduated from college and seminar, he received a call from a fashionable church in Boston to become its assistant pastor. Everyone congratulated him. His mother and sister rejoiced that he could live at home with them and do his life work. But Jason shook his, his head. My work is not here, he said. God is calling me beyond the seas. To stay here, even to serve God in his ministry, I will be only partially obeying. And I could not be happy in that. Although it cost, me, it cost him a great struggle, he left mother, sister, to follow the heavenly call. Jason churches in Burma have had 50,000 converts, and the influence of his consecrating life is fed around the world. Very deep. He could stay home. But can you imagine? 50,000 people were converted lost soul just because this guy said, I'm gonna do what God asked me to do. He didn't tell other people, he told him and he did it. Hi again. I hope you were blessed by what you have just watched. Now, our vision is to help you to get in touch with God, others and your destiny. In case you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is a time and an opportunity for you to pray a simple prayer to receive him into your heart. All you need to do is to say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross. Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, help me to live a life as a true believer. Amen. That was a simple prayer, but if you believed in that prayer and you repeated it and received Jesus into your heart, you're born again. And we really want to keep in touch with you and ask you to continue to watch some of these teachings so that you can grow in your spiritual life. Now, if you'd like to be a part of this ministry, you can support us in three different ways. One of the ways is you can support us by praying. We'd really appreciate that. Pray for us. We covered the prayers of saints all around the world. Second, you can also do it by passing this link to somebody that you know. You know, somebody can be blessed and hopefully be connected to God just like you. Last but not least, you can also support us financially. There is a link in your screen where you can go to our homepage and figure out how you can either be a one-time or an ongoing donor to this ministry so we can spread the good news far and wide. Look, whether this is the first time I'm going to see you or you may come back to see us again, I just want to pray that God bless you and I hope that you'll have a wonderful day. Thank you and stay in touch. See you, bye.